Hey there, Jeff. Lubin with Practically Tactical here once again with our very good friend Steve Fisher. My hand gestures are just getting larger and larger. <laughs> They're getting better. More extravagant. Uh, but like, as always, Steve opens up his tailgate to his truck and neat things start coming out. Um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about this 7615 police model Remington. So years back, Remington, during I think it was probably more heading through the Clinton Van era and stuff like that, but a lot of departments were looking to transition from their 870 shotguns to patrol rifles. And some necessarily didn't want either a semi-auto AR to retrain their guys on completely. So Remington basically took their 7600 gun, which is their hunting stable, line up their pump gun with a free floater barrel, uh, turned it into a police configuration by adding a magazine well and release similar to that of the AR-15, allowing it to take any standard AR mag from metal, aluminum, T-mags, whoever's out there that they were choosing to use. So 10, 20, 30 rounders, whatever you want. If it's an AR mag, it'll go in the gun. It's a 223.556, obviously, it comes with a set of ghost rings. It is drilled in tap or a scope mount because obviously it's still using their standard receiver. A set of black synthetic stocks on it. It did come in a configuration with wood stocks and collapsibles at one time. Mm. You know, kind of the cool thing about this gun is though that the transition into it to law enforcement getting into this coming from an 870 was that the controls were still the same. You know, the cross bolt push button safety, the slide action release located in the same location as it is on the 870s. So it kind of made a natural progression for them to switch to with minimal amount of training other than pushing a button to release a magazine. Mm. Doesn't have a lot of last shot bolt hole open. So not a big deal, kind of treated like an AK. But if you go through 30 in a pump action patrol rifle, that's it's probably a bad day. Yeah. You, you, you know, you're gonna have a problem. So. Like I said, free floated barrel, the accuracy is there, comes with a set of sling swivels, takes like a standard hunting carry type sling and strap with it. It's a very accurate rifle, I've been really impressed with it. There's really nothing bad I can say about it. It's a great alternative gun for those that may not want a semi-automatic AR-15, or they're just so familiar or they have a 7600 series hunting gun at home that they're real familiar with. Or they just want to look for something kind of on a budget. You know, you know today's political climate right now, we're seeing these $600 ARs at $1,500. People mm -hmm. are in that panic mode again, which is just silly, but whatever. If people really dig around and look for these, they can find them on the cheap. I picked this one up from a buddy of mine for like $300. I've seen them anywhere as expensive as, you know, five to $900 for the dudes that are like, oh, I've got to have it. You know, it's rare now, they discontinued it. Whatever. But if you look hard, you dig around, you can find it. To me, it makes a nice travel gun, a ranch gun. It can be used as a house gun. And, and, and a travel gun, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's a pump action gun with no pistol. Gun. So other than a detachable magazine, depending on what the restrictions are in that state, you know, you can pretty much take this anywhere you want to in North America. Mm. It's just a really simple, reliable, durable gun. How old is it? Yeah. I mean, like, playing with it, it's kind of like when you think about one of those, um, just. 870s with an 18 inch barrel and just a, a shorter magazine tube, that quick handling feel. Yeah. It's really lightweight, it's really quick handling. I like how thin this forend is. It just, it just like you can really wrap your, your hands around it. And I did have an opportunity to take about 10 shots of it and it's just stupidly accurate, really soft shooting. It's just a really cool, interesting transitional gun. Yeah, it really is. It kind of got a bad rap early on for having some, you know, feeding issues. And I don't really know if that was a training issue or a magazine issue that they were using at the time. But for me, I haven't had any problems with it. I've probably put 12, 1,500 rounds to it. So oh, I've really? Had many. Yeah. I, I've shot this gun a lot. It's a great gun. I enjoy it. The only thing that I will change on this is I'm going to change that front ramp with the white insert to a night sight blade just so I have that capability with it. And other than that, it's just a fun gun. Standing here, I find a newspaper, I feel like Lee Harvey Oswald. Is that weird? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. absolutely. Hey guys, would be. notice though that like the, uh, uh, what was it, the, uh, the lighting, mm -hmm. was the shadows were weird. Yeah. Was it, who shot? Um, Kennedy, I don't know. Beats me. Totally different a video. Let's shoot this. All right, let's do it. <laughs> I mean, it's so soft shoot. It is. It, it, it's crazy ridiculous. Oh. Want to take some shots? Yeah, it's my gun. Of course I will. <laughs> Oh, that last one was a headshot.
headshot. I know. Just FYI. Yeah, I know. I mean, it, it's a stupid, simple gun, and it works really, really well. You know, I've got a hodgepodge magazine of ammunition of all kinds of weird stuff that I put together that's been just sitting in an ammo can. So mm. really don't know what that was all about, but I really don't care. Mm. So obviously the beauty is if you do have a failure, hey, it's easy to clear that failure to track it instead of sitting there having to tap, rack, run right. a charging handle. Here it's simply cycle the press the, the trigger, cycle the action, and go. So it really is truly a simple gun to run and operate. Yeah. It really is a lot of fun. Do we have any more bolts in that? Oh, yeah. All right. I want to shoot it again. Cool. Want to come back here, Jess, or no? No, that's good. It's funny because I would have been done like three AR mags by now, I but I mean, this requires you to kind of stay on the sights, get on it, keep it honest. You can upgrade the gun a little bit, you know, if you want to. It is drilled and tapped. You can put a scope rail on it, you know, put an optic on it, a red dot, magnified optics. For me, I like it just as it sits, other than, like I said, changing out that front blade or something with a night sight insert in it or a bigger white stripe or, you know, whatever the case may be. I need to see it a lot better with. But I, I really dig it. I enjoy it. It's a stupid, simple gun. It's easy to manipulate and operate. Low, low recoil. The gun stays really flat, as the viewers saw. It's just a cool gun, man. So what are we at? Like a hundred and this is like 110, 115 yards. 115 yards, just freestanding shots. A pretty wide uh, front sight, but I mean, it's easy to make hits. Yeah, you yeah know? it really is. And really cool. It's just like an episode of this old gun, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thanks a lot, Steve. Hey, no problem. Always a pleasure. Don't buy them because I want to buy one. So wait till I have one and then try to get one. Okay. Jeff Blue with Practically Tactical. Thanks again to Steve Fisher. Thanks again to Alliance PD Range for having us. Go ahead and like this video, subscribe to it, and if you like what we're putting down, if you're picking up what we're putting down, share it with other people. Okay? We'll see you next time.